Good. So welcome, everybody. It's my pleasure to introduce Gigi Odaka, who will be giving a talk on compactify moduli and the generations of k-trivial varieties. Thank you for the introduction and the invitation uh, for the chance to speak here. Uh, by the way, do you need my face? Is it? Oh. We see your face, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. I mean, sometimes it may make it freeze or... Up to you. Network is... People said they want to see your face. Okay. <laughs> so I'm... So the... As you see, so I'm going to focus on the K-trivial case. But uh, so here's the overview of the talk today. So I think first, uh, maybe a bit less than half will be about like review of more general picture on the K moduli. So I want to, I mean, K moduli means a moduli of K stability. So I want to start with a K stability viewpoint. And I think as there's been like 10 talks on K moduli, I guess, or K stability in this ZAC. So I think I don't need a much introduction, but, uh, and the second half will be focusing on K3 surface case. So one of the main problem or main theme I'm pursuing now is to uh, have a canonical compactification of moduli. And uh, so in the second half, this uh, K3 case, so I'm going to discuss something which is not uh, in the category of varieties, but still canonical. And I present how it uh, interact with classical algebraic geometry. And uh, so the second half will be more explicit. So if you like the explicit, more explicit story, maybe you prefer this part. Or um, that is kind of connected. And uh, at the last part, maybe like just a, a few slides, I'll um, briefly introduce uh, my recent papers. Okay. So let's start. So, so here, here's a conjecture um, maybe many of you know already. Uh, so yeah, Tian Don also conjecture uh, predict that uh, um, CSCK metric, the kind of a canonical scalar metric in a fixed scalar class, uh, the existence should be equivalent to this k-poly stability notion. So that's a purely algebraic notion. So in terms of skin theory. And uh, <clears throat> so k einstein this K-E case is a special case of this CSCK, especially when L and K-X is proportional. So, <clears throat> but general, this CS, general CSCK makes sense for uh, general polarization. And uh, this KE case uh, is, of course, uh, classified into three basic cases. So if A is negative or zero or positive, so that's, uh, as you know, a like canonical model, Calabial case and the uh, final case. They, they are, these are building block. So this should be basic in, uh, also from this viewpoint. Oops. So here's a uh, um, personally, um, here's my uh, um, start point of the observation. So the um, using the MMP, we can see that this K stability condition should uh, impose a mildness of singularity. So that's uh, the condition. And the second and the third claim is, I hope you see my castle. Um, so these cases, uh, K stability is, or semi stability is purely uh, describable in terms of a singularity, mildness of singularities. So K ample case, the stability and semi stability coincide and does nothing but uh, um, case BA stable varieties. And uh, this Calabial case, the stability is equivalent to KLT, so it's especially normal. And uh, 
uh, semi-stability should be equivalent to semi-locality. So, <clears throat> and uh, this, uh, oops, sorry. Um, this case, I mean, the second claim uh, gives a uh, case stability interpretation of this KSPA module, so which was a uh, module of K ample varieties. And uh, it's kind of gave me a hint that uh, um, as KSBA didn't use GIT, uh, case stability could replace the role of GIT for, to fit the story. And uh, today's focus will be on this side. But uh, as you know, like uh, as probably many of you know uh, from the talks in the ZAC, uh, final case has been developed a lot recently. So I saw what to mention um, briefly. Let's see. But before that, uh, let me um, compare with the classical GIT. So classical GAT looks like this. So, <clears throat> so if you try, for example, like the construction of modular curves in the Malpo's GIT. So he took a uh, um, Hilbert scheme of a curves and uh, he divided, um, quotient it uh, out by uh, SL, the projected transformation. As the Hilbert scheme parameterizes not only curve, but it's a, their embeddings. So we want to remove the information of the embeddings, just the chemical polarizations. So we want to quote, uh, divide it out. And then, uh, so the problem is about the existence of a uh, course moduli of this quotient stack, which is the moduli stack. And then if you re um, restricted uh, semi-stable workers, then we have a projective course, uh, projective course uh, moduli scheme. So that's a very nice story of a GIT. And uh, as you know, this is not really the set theoretically uh, quotient, um, rather um, if you see in, uh, we can see in this way. So um, there's a notion of polystability corresponding to the closed orbit um, in the affine invariant locus. Uh, then, uh, Polystable locus is, of course, a subset of uh, semi-stable locus. And if this uh, coarse modular space is the qu quotient of this polystable locus, which is not necessarily open. So it's just, if you think in, we can see, think in uh, just set, set theoretically way. So this is uh, set theoretically, me, um, I'm focusing on closed points, but, uh, um, this is the quotient of polystable things. And then, um, or one can say that this is the um, S equivalent class of a semi-stable thing. So that's equivalent to the, uh, this description. And in particular, this description says that in any semi-stable point, um, I saw trivially limit to a polystable point. So here's an example picture. So here, a C star is acting on uh, C2. Uh, although I cannot uh, write uh, C2 in this uh, real two-dimensional plane. So it's a uh, um, so semi-stable locus is this whole affine piece. And then a polystable locus consists of this uh, quadrant and uh, this with this uh, origin. And if you take that a uh, point in point around here, like in uh, x axis, then uh, it's isotribute degenerate to this point, which is a polystable point. So any semi stable point isotribute limit to polystable point. This is a, a basic thing in a basic phenomenon in a classical GIT. And the recent funnel case, uh, so I don't, I don't uh, review much on this, but. Uh, very roughly speaking, uh, so so in final case, more precisely, anti-canonically polarized case. So so we should, uh, I think, precisely speaking, we should call it that way, anti-canonically polarized case. Um, uh, 
J moduli works uh, more or less the same as classical GAT, uh, but they are locally, on the etar locally. So for example, the um, so we cannot directly apply GIT, of course. Also, there are some natural line bundle called CM line bundle. It's not necessarily an ample on the whole Hubert scheme. So uh, it doesn't, uh, classical GIT doesn't directly apply, but uh, as a result, it's the moduli. So we have a coarse moduli, which is, uh, and uh, it's et al locally look the same, the same way as classical GIT. So the formulation is uh, given in four. So, so it now called a good moduli space in um, Alpha's framework. So, so we originally called it K moduli stack. But uh, anyway, one good thing of this moduli story is that this should be proper or compact from a uh, differential geometric uh, reasoning. So. Even Sorry? when the even when the varieties in the module are not smoothable, I mean, sorry, yeah, it's not proved yet, but it should be. It should be. So, yeah, yeah. So it's conjecture. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. As uh, has said, that this is uh, only proved in the um, smoothable case, and uh, there's also recent progress, but. Okay, I, I'm gonna explain this. So Donald Sonson said that if you, this K, in this final case, the um, K polish stability is equivalent to Kerr-Einstein existence as a, the breakthrough, you know? And uh, then one can just uh, take a limit of this Kerr-Einstein in differential geometric way. Then it's good, so it's gromo hassel of limit. Then uh, Donaldson's to prove that it's uh, actually uh, still algebraic varieties. That's a really fantastic result. I was astonished. <clears throat> and uh, of course, uh, well, as algebraic geometer, so we want to have a algebraic proof that it's not uh, done yet in general. And uh, so there's a recent uh, very good progress in this paper. They reduced the uh, um, some finitely generated condition uh, at the variation of uh, delta minimization. Um, so, so anyway, at least conjecturally, we, we can expect this properness. So that's a very good thing in the Q final case, anti canonically porous case, but it's not true in general. That's what I want to go to uh, <coughs> say. Uh, so uh, taking this chance, I, I want to give the two small suggestions on this k modular story. So first suggestion is to about the modular functors definition. So uh, as, I far as, as far as I, um, I see, uh, so I think people write a modular functor by using this Q-Gorenstein uh, Q deformations uh, without uh, um, um, putting a polarization itself. So, well, I mean, it's very subtle, but uh, people normally uh, suppose the base is normal or smooth. And then, so that one can talk about the uh, um, canonical device on the total space. And we want to require the Kubernetes So that's a kind of uh, idea of Kubernetes deformation. But uh, what I suggest is to <clears throat> consider just a polarized scheme deformation, which is just scheme theory, flat, plot projective, relatively ample. <clears throat> then uh, uh, we require that, the, I mean, each fiber, this is minus MK for the fixed M. Then, uh, so it's actually um, easy to see that if S is smooth or normal, then it's automatically implies q Einstein deformation. So this lemma is, uh, um, only true if the fibers are ir irreducible. So, I mean, we can take benefit from the uh, um, irreducibility. irreducibility. But uh, this condition, <coughs> this uh, definition allows a general S. So <coughs> this may be a um, subtle replacement of the K-moduli functor. So 
Um, yes. uh, so before going to the next slide. Um, so when we wrote, uh, when we discussed the uh, um, smoothable case, I mean the K-moduli of smoothable funnel and the proof the uh, cosmoduli existence. So uh, I think we didn't clearly uh, said that um, the that is the cos moduli of this functor. So I think we uh, my my uh, paper and also Li Wanju and uh, <clears throat> they um, both of us uh, wrote in the way that we can divide this out this natural locus of this K Einstein. So that that was a claim, and we didn't. Uh, so as in particular, I only put a reduced skin structure, and uh, they also took semi normalization. But uh, if you think on some such uh, skin theoretic uh, information, then uh, we need uh, this kind of enrichment, I guess. So the aim of this uh, refinement of the functor is to see this conjecture. <clears throat> if if this is true, so I hope this uh, functor is representable by a cost projective scheme, which is not necessarily reduced. Yeah, so I, I was uh, discussing uh, this kind of issue. Sorry, the factor fixes the volume for compactness. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, we need okay. certainly need boundedness. So um, fix a volume or just uh, take a. a uh, lower bound of the volume. So it's kind of equivalent due to Chan Jam. Okay. I mean, equivalent. I mean, uh, if, if, um, so he proved that uh, if we have a lower bound of the volume and it requires semi stability of Q funnel, then it's automatically bounded. So that's what he proved. So Chan Jam, Jan's uh, paper. Um, So I was discussing with Anne Sophie and uh, Andrea about this kind of uh, issue, and also like Ito San Sano San. So if uh, this, so some, um, especially if we uh, focus on smoothable case, then uh, most of the K modular is um, normal. So that's very good. Uh, but uh, in general, we, we don't, we have some pathological examples. So due, due to them, I mean, as they pointed out. So, and uh, so this Li Nakayama paper um, has a general Q Gorenstein, uh, Q Gorenstein morphism. So they have this notion of Q Gorenstein morphism. So over any locally Noetherian scheme. So I, I'm not, uh, so familiar with his pep, uh, their paper, but uh, this may be this may help. I I hope. Okay, so this uh, one small suggestion and another uh, thing is so this conjecture is not necessary for funnel, but uh, um, it's about uh, minimizing uh, CM degree. So if you um, have a polarized family of a family of porous varieties like this, then uh, you have CM line bundle the base. That's a uh, so I don't give definition, but uh, uh, you can see in the many literatures in the case stability. And uh, so this conjecture says that um, basically the CM line bundle degree, if we consider the CM line bundle degree, so, so suppose this C is cut curved. And then uh, consider any kind of uh, vertical, but birational transforms. So we replace fibers, just uh, some some fibers. After possibly, possibly after final phase change, then uh, if all the fibers are K semi-stable, then I expect that it's a uh, same degree is minimized among all these transformations. Other possibilities. So. <clears throat> And uh, I also expect this characterizes the semi stability of the fiber or also um, the I mean, K natural K moduli functor. But well, technically, I am putting S2 condition here. Uh, 
and the flatness. So this con, I mean, this conjecture, I, I didn't write in a paper, but I presented in some talks. And uh, so basically K, K Einstein case, we have a problem. We have a good progress. So K ample case and K trivial case is known. And the final case, so there's a development now. So this direction, the so same stability implies in, uh, implying a C minimization is um, known to Blum and Harold and uh, Chili and Xiao Weiwan and Chin. <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, it is not published uh, uh, as they said, but, uh, and, but this direction uh, seems not yet proved. And uh, so it's related to properness conjecture because I mean, we want a semi-stable feeling in the given, yeah, puncture family. So that's cross the properness conjecture that uh, characterizes uh, numerically. Okay, what time is it now? Um, so, so you've done 20 minutes or so? Sorry? 20 you're asking minutes? the time, you've done 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so uh, originally I was expecting that, uh, so that uh, the difference of CM after replacing the fibers could be some Donaldson Ftaki invariant in some sense. I mean, those Donaldson Ftaki invariant of the replaced fiber. So that's uh, what I expected it originally, but it seems not so um, simple. And uh, their approach, their approach is that uh, to regard the CM difference as a beta invariant of Fujita <coughs> or a slight uh, refinement. So. Yeah, this conjecture seems, uh, this conjecture itself um, still makes sense. And uh, I hope this is true, but uh, it's, I mean, I tried with Richard Thomas, but uh, it was a really difficult problem. And, and so for general polarization, the only paper I know of uh, discussing this is uh, by Kentaro Ono. Uh, he was a student of Gongyo, and uh, so he discussed, so he related with some weaker version of soap stability for general polarization, but he didn't uh, do any base change, final base change, so it's, uh, yeah, some variant, but. And uh, so now uh, we come to the story of the uh, Karabiao case. So in Calabria case, we have uh, this uh, very simple criterion of the stability. So of course, um, the K Einstein existence or each flat K metric uh, existence is due to this uh, Yao's very big theorem. And um, so of course we know that if X is smooth then it's K stable. And, but uh, poly stability is equivalent to this chaotic condition. And then semi stability is says S. So the singularity control series. So the examples is examples. Um, so I mean, this stability one, stable ones include the epic curve, just a smooth one or uh, with ADE. And then uh, so one dimensional case, epic curve can degenerate to R. N gone of P ones. That's the examples. SLC, uh, Calabria, and uh, or in two-dimensional case, uh, type two or type two three click of degeneration. Uh, if you have a polarization on it. So, so but then we face a very um, how do I say? annoying problem. So if you take a semi-stable one, then it's, it should have a, it's, it's no longer KLT. So it's of course does not degenerate to poly-stable. 
So it's really different from the classical GIT or the final case. So final case, we had a, well, I think it's, um, just, I'm not perfectly sure if it's proved in general q funnel, but for k semi stable q funnel should uh, isotropy degenerate to unique k for stable, which is uh, k Einstein. <coughs> and uh, anyway, so also for, so for this Carabello case, uh, if you degenerate the elliptic curve, just one dimensional case, then we we have this IN degeneration, so in the collateral sense, but we don't have a bound of N. So for any N, so we cannot parameterize all IN degeneration at the just more boundary of the um, modular FD elliptic curve, which is just a J line. So this is a very deep but annoying problem, which is uh, kind of exciting. But uh, <clears throat> then how about the street street stable workers? So which is just parameterizing KLT, normal carabia. So uh, to set the scene, um, let's fix a moduli of smooth ones. Then it's quasi projective by favorite. Then, but, if you consider k stable ones, uh, it's we should admit KLT singularities, and then uh, we still have some problem for the KLT Carabial degeneration, which should appear on the boundary of this fixed connected moduli. Uh, naturally, this uh, polarization can degenerate to Q polarization. I mean, in other words. After multiplying, I mean, taking tensor power, then it can degenerate to primitive polarization at the boundary. So, <clears throat> so I mean, we can have a KLT Carabial polarized uh, degeneration, XL, where L uh, sitting just in uh, one over N of peak. Then, uh, a priori, we don't have a we are not sure if there's a upper bound of this index, the denominator n. So this is a very subtle problem. So the picture looks like this. So we have a module of smooth ones here, smooth carabial. So this is quasi projective if you fix a connected component. <coughs> Only have a overfold uh, singularity. But if you allow KLT carabial degeneration, then depending on N, we have uh, this infinitely many quasi projective partial compatrication. So it's, it may sound a bit weird that there could be uh, this, I mean, inclusions infinitely many times, although they're all quasi projective, but uh, just simple noise area argument doesn't imply this stabilizers. So, this is quite non-trivial problem. But uh, this stabilization is actually true for the classical cases like Arbery and varieties and the uh, case three cases, these are known. And the uh, modular is just uh, one kind of uh, similar variety. And the hypercalar case also we confirmed recently by using um, um, hot theory pre-period um, period space. Um, yeah, we don't discuss the details, but ah, I forgot to say, but this uh, talk is basically a kind of survey talk. So with a not particular one result, but uh, many results. And uh, I'm not going to discuss the details of the proof. So please stop uh, if you want to know the details, maybe at least I can um, refer to some reference. Anyway. So this boundedness problem, I think it's, it's open. I also uh, discussed with Mark Gross, but uh, I think it is open. And the uh, Carabia matrix is uh, are also continuous. So it's known that, uh, of course, smooth Carabia admit a rich flat Kela as a Yau serum. And also KLT Carabia uh, is the same as a AG2 get uh, Zeriaki proof. 
So we all have a rigid flat scalar metric, these uh, uh, di bounded di finite diameters. So that's good. The, so the metrics are also continuous on this. So yeah, but uh, anyhow, so if you try to compactify this, um, not only partial compactification, so we want to allow non-normal degenerations, then uh, I think the story uh, becomes much more difficult. Um, yeah, so I, <clears throat> this, um, we can at least talk about uh, some weaker version of K-moduli, that is the, some projective compactification with boundary parameterizes semi-stable ones, but not polystable ones or stable ones as in the case of fun or classical GAT. So that's on, only semi-stable, not uh, S equivalent classes of semi-stable. Then this kind of uh, weak moduli, weak, weak version of K moduli, uh, known in many cases. That's, um, this is, uh, um, gives a viewpoint, K stability viewpoint in uh, known uh, project compactification. So the renowned example is uh, the second Voronoi toroidal compactification of the moduli uh, <coughs> abelian varieties. So, um, yeah, as they proved, um, this uh, one of the toroidal compactification parameterizes uh, SLC uh, degeneration of abelian varieties with polarizations. And uh, there are also other examples, the many other examples, and it's developing now. But uh, M bar is somehow, so this weak K moduli is somehow often dominated by toroidal or semi toric compactification uh, when M has a structure of uh, similar variety, connected similar variety. So, the way uh, they uh, construct this kind of uh, weak K moduli is often by taking a log version of KSPA. That is, we take an ample divisor on the this given Carabial family, <coughs> for example, like Avrin variety, then we can take a theta divisor, then it's ample. <coughs> so we can talk about the pair of its XT. And then this, um, pair as a, of course, ample low canonical divisor. So if you consider the moduli of pair of these, then it looks much more like a mo uh, usual KSPA moduli. So um, we can apply the usual method so that uh, we get uh, some compactification, but it's in general, it's hard to see uh, which explicit complication, which degenerations appears. It's, it's uh, hard for work for each varieties. But um, <coughs> here's uh, another problem. So it's really depend on D you take. So originally we wanted uh, moduli, uh, we wanted to compactify the moduli of XL in some canonical way, but uh, it's uh, depend on D. So of course, it's depend on how you see it. So it's, uh, uh, if you change the, uh, we can enjoy many other compactifications. So that's maybe seen as a, some benefit, but if we want to uh, have a canonical compactification, this ambiguity is a bit annoying. So indeed, uh, so in degree two K3 case, there's a, very um, beautiful work uh, recently done by Alexey Engel and uh, Thompson. So they uh, constructed uh, compactification as an example of KSPA. And it's, so the moduli, the boundary parameterizes SLC degeneration of KSPA. But uh, there's another example by, which is more classical by Shah. But these, 
also they param the boundary, both of the boundaries parameterized SLC K0 degeneration, they are different. So it really gives a um, non canonicity So uh, the um, problem I was thinking is uh, how one can still try to get a canonical compactification. So which, which may not exist a priori or it, but uh, so <laughs> the ideas I'm pursuing now recently is to use a differential geometric idea. So recall that in the final case, so this Donaldson's theorem said that if you have a punctured family of Kerenstein, then if you just take a limit of this Kerenstein metric itself, then it gives the answer. So this is a kind of a stable reduction uh, theorem. And uh, so it's really, I mean, um, surprising that it's, uh, we only have a differential geometric proof at this moment. But uh, yeah, but let's try to imitate this uh, differential geometric idea. Take this canonical metric and then take the limit of this. But uh, yeah, so let's start from the um, easiest case, the elliptic curve. So here's the classical example of Tate's curve. So just a uh, usual elliptic curve is degenerating into, um, like in this case, just a rational nodal curve. And uh, okay, you can you can write in this way. And then the but the canonical metric, canonical Kähler metric is just a flat Kähler metric. It's just a usual, um, I mean, standard metric on the C uh, descended. But um, what happens if we just take a limit of this? Then uh, here's, a, here's a picture. So automatically the natural, uh, automatically the um, volume of this natural Kähler Einstein metric is fixed if you uh, take a um, from the fixed scalar class, but um, we can also rescale it. Rescale means just multiply by positive real constant. So uh, start from the SLT curve. Then uh, if you take, uh, okay, so let me start with this case. So here we are fixing this, uh, this direction length. So injectivity radius, then uh, it's limit to the cylinder, as you see. So it can be interpreted as a C star, which is a, a complement of two points on P1, okay? But if you rescale, so, or this is just our original, mo most natural um, sequence of this uh, um, Kieran matrix. So the limit is just a real line, as you see. <clears throat> this direction goes longer and longer. This direction goes shorter and shorter, and we get a real line. So we already get different limits. If you fix a diameter, this direction, let's fix this direction, more or less. Then what we get is S1, as you see. So, <clears throat> and uh, this, um, this kind of uh, way of taking limits um, is not new. It's, so it's uh, was uh, discussed it, discussed uh, in extensively in uh, the context of mirror symmetry. So especially the contribution Soibelman conjecture said that if for general Calabial, if you fix a diameter and take limit, then we should get uh, some sort of tropicalization. That was his adult there also. Gross Wilson conjecture added, but uh, so very beautiful result, a very beautiful conjecture. So, and it's tropicalization means dual intersection complex of the minimal degeneration, and which is also called the essential skeleton. And uh, so, anyway, the um, 
what we'll do from the now is to we use this uh, third perspective, or mainly, and so, so we use this uh, third perspective and a bit of one uh, for the com modular complication. So anyway, as we have a canonical metric to each member, we can take a limit. Uh, we can discuss the limit of uh, um, limit of them. So that's a basic idea, very natural idea. Um, so the slogan is the K Einstein matrix knows a lot about degeneration. Indeed, if you see this C star as a narrow model of the minimal degeneration, then it's somehow K Einstein extract this uh, narrow model information. And then if you see this uh, S1 as a dual intersection complex without using MMP, this K Einstein know, already knows what should be the dual intersection complex of the minimal degeneration. That's very, I mean, I mean, this is very simple case, but it's still very surprising to me. So let's go to the test three case. I think I, um, I only have 20 minutes. I think I spent too much time. Uh, so in case three case, as you know, the moduli are polarized um, algebraic ones has a structure of uh, uh, connected similar variety. So it's 19, complex 19 dimensional um, locally Hamishan symmetric domain as a, uh, by using this period. Um, yeah, by totally theorem and subjectivity of the periods. And uh, what we'll use from now is this uh, theory of Satake. So, so to each uh, sort of sim well, similar variety like this, uh, we have a counter we have a compactification theory originated by Satake. So already like um, sixty years ago, but. <clears throat> Most famous one is probably Satake Berry Borel computation, which is projective. And uh, yeah, but actually, Satake constructed finite computation to each space. Uh, and we use, uh, we use something which is different from Berry Borel. So Satake first constructed a finite computation and later Barry Borel proved one of them is projective in the case where the original um, symmetric uh, space is Hamishan. So we use a, so this above um, adjoint representation, adjoint type Satake computation. So whatever it is, uh, you can just regard it as a compact um, topological space with open dense um, um, part, which is, well, I mean, the compact topological compactification of the original um, modular porous case. Then the boundary, I mean, the, I mean uh, boundary by this partial. Um, so it's uh, the it's too obscure, but uh, this L stands for uh, isotropic lines in the lattice, in the lattice, and <clears throat> so which also naturally appears in the Satake Borel, Satake Berry Borel case. So if, if you know this uh, theory of Satake Berry Borel and description of this, uh, the description description in the K three case. Um, you should know this. It's the boundary strata ha have a two type: type three degeneration case, type two degeneration, uh, type two degeneration case, which is modular curve, um, um, and uh, type three degeneration case. We only have one point. So these are the strata, and uh, the disjoint union has a structure of projective um, complication. Uh, the here the adjoint type case. So we have a uh, actually the um, set of boundary strata have a bijection to that of a uh, very polar case, but the closure relations come somehow converted. So in so here we have P. Uh, it's a triple plane. 
but in the corresponding to it, we have only have one point here. And so it's zero dimensional. But here we have a two dimension. So, um, but this part is more interesting uh, if you see, uh, just see the dimension. Um, this is real 18 dimensional wall quotient. So, so this is not a uh, algebraic variety classification. So what we did, uh, I mean, the work, joint work with Oshima, sorry, I should have written name, his name, but Oshima, so I hope you, you um, yeah, so this in the work of Oshima, uh, section four, so we constructed some, so we uh, parameterized some geometric object at the boundary. So in Satake's theory, this is just a compactification as just as, as a space, topological space. But uh, we want to parameterize some geometric object. And uh, that's what I, we do for this adjoint case. And uh, so for each, um, this L type boundary, type three uh, boundary, so we associate some S2. And for this type two boundary strata, we associate a segment, unit interval. So this is of course not a variety, but uh, we, we both have a metric. And our, um, our conjecture, uh, which we have a partial progress is that uh, if you put, so these are continuous in some sense. So K, we have a Kerenstein metric on the inner part. So it's, uh, um, real four dimensional um, Riemannian manifolds. Uh, so, so important thing is that we are dividing by the diameter, so fixing diameter. Then, uh, so if we approach the boundary, then this x uh, x four the k three somehow now collapsed to s two, and in type two case we uh, should co uh, collapse to the unit interval. And uh, we at least prove this direction, this S2 direction. So, and also this direction. So the sketch proof is that if we, <coughs> the main point of the proof is that if we approach the boundary, this real 80 dimensional uh, locus, then we obtain uh, some vibration. So, if we take a sequence of K3 approaching the boundary, then from some point, we get uh, something called special Lagrangian vibration as expected in the mirror symmetry. Uh, we have some explicit region we, um, where we have the special Lagrangian vibration. And what we observe is that if we further approach the boundary, then the fiber collapse, then we get the S2 as a limit. So that's uh, what we prove. <coughs> This special Lagrangian vibration can be seen as a kind of uh, elliptic K3, but with a different complex um, structure, uh, which is explained by hyper Kera rotation. Anyway, so this existence of special Lagrangian vibration uh, fits to the mirror symmetry conjecture. Okay. And the uh, recent development uh, is about type two case. So as I said, that uh, if you have type two degeneration of K3, then uh, metric should uh, limit to the unit interval, uh, which is not, uh, the proof is not written or not proved uh, yet. But uh, <clears throat> um, if we consider the um, density of the Morgan jump measure, then we somehow get a PL density function on the unit interval. So, uh, although I ex uh, explained in a very different geometric way, you can just think of this as an invariant for type two degeneration. If you have a type two degeneration of polarized K3, then you have some PL density function, which looks like this. And the shape is classified by the Dinkin diagram. So, this is a uh, 
so I, I'm explaining a recent work. Um, uh, so the work is consists of, uh, so it, it's still uh, joint work with Oshima, but uh, we, our paper split it too. So the Oshima's one is not appeared, but my one appeared. So um, yeah, anyway, so we associate some function, PL function, uh, piecewise linear function to each type two degeneration, which itself can be interesting from algebra geometry viewpoint. And uh, partially, we conjecture and it uh, partially proved that this captures the limits uh, measure of the KLH. So this was uh, really inspired by the work of uh, Honda, Sun, and Sun, uh, Robin Zhang. And uh, so they proved this kind of existence of V in abstract way. So they proved that um, if it's com if some sequence of K3 converges to the segment, then we should have some PL function. That's what they that's what they proved. So the precise uh, statement is right written here. And uh, we kind of explicitly determined uh, this V. What time is it? Oh, we only have 10 minutes. So um, what we really did is uh, first we consider real 70 dimensionable quotients. And uh, okay. and uh, oh, we means uh, not only me, but well, I mean, um, actually they, they did this. So, so there's a real 70 dimensionable quotient and uh, there's a map um, to the space of P. So there's a definition of P for each point. And these are independently uh, defined by this Alexev uh, ABE work and the uh, Oshima independently. But uh, surprisingly, they came from a very different um, motivation. So ABE work uh, was done um, to use uh, to de describe a log KSPA moduli computation of elliptic case. So the moduli is uh, complex 18 dimensional, and they want to compact, they, they compactified, and they, they, this, they use this V for the description, especially that they, they um, okay, I'll I explain a bit later, but. Uh, so, well, our um, discussion came from a more differential geometric background. And, uh, yeah, so what we do is that, oh, sorry, I, this uh, square should be replaced by this one. This, this uh, polygon looking like uh, stuff is, uh, means the real 17 dimensional ball quotient. But anyway, so if you have a type two degeneration, the first we, assign some point as a limit inside this real 17 dimensional ball portion. Then just apply this flat map. That's a deconstruction. And uh, <clears throat> there's some, oh, maybe I, sh I omit this part. Uh, so the V looks like this. So V um, has a, well, essentially, well, several um, types. And the uh, left end can look like this, three cases. So these numbers are slope. And these uh, lengths are determined by the intersection with roots. So this, uh, if you're familiar with the uh, module of uh, elliptic K3 or uh, like Shioda Inose structures, then uh, this, uh, you may be familiar with this roots. So, Anyway, so there are three cases. At the left side, this L stands for the left side, and the same for right side. So, so this ABE works uh, use this V to make S2 from this. So they constructed, uh, they grouped this part, and uh, so uh, they grew two of this graph to get S2, as the picture shows. So it looks like dumping. And, uh, but we, so, yeah. For, but 
for the way to get the, the limit, uh, we use a Satake complication again in uh, either well, of the moduli of all KRK3. Okay, so I think I have uh, too much slides, sorry. <laughs> um, so, so if you consider all KRK3, the moduli is 57 dimension up to hyper -K rotation. And then the boundary looks like this. So one of the SATA case looks like this. If you replace by another SATA case, then the boundary looks like this. And we use this, this part. So this part parameterizes P. And uh, so, so in the paper two years ago, we parameterize this. Um, we, we conjecture this, this uh, SATA case complication should um, capture the limit of K3 matrix. But uh, we uh, expect this 70 dimensional part um, uh, captures the limit measure. But you may feel this is real, really like a over a real number story, but actually not true. Well, if you extract this part, just a part of boundary, it's real six, 36 dimension, but it's coincide with the moduli of elliptic K3. So this can be seen as this has a, this boundary strata has a complex structure. And uh, also the original module itself is 57 dimensions. So it's not complex, but the boundary strata has a complex um, structure. And we can apply like usual similar variety things here. And uh, we can also discuss the moduli of elliptic K3 in, um, in algebraic way. Then, uh, so from here, we use the uh, algebraic geometry of elliptic K3. Then we prove that um, the hope was true. So, um, let's see. So the main theorem is at least this. Uh, 36 dimension parameter S2, which is the basically the base of um, elliptic K3 or the special Lagrange vibration. Then uh, this S2 collapses to segment with this uh, the, um, expected limit measure. But the proof is really actually uh, algebraic geometry or um, calculation of variation, I'd say. So I use this work of Abe, uh, Abe, not Abe, sorry, um, ABE, um, and uh, calculated uh, variations, essentially. Uh, so I'm using the Satake framework, but actually we can all replace by uh, something called Morgan Sharon type complication. The boundary is uh, some dual intersection complex. Anyway, actually the proof is direct. That's what I'm saying. And uh, so I think I should stop in a few minutes um, by... Uh, yeah, technically uh, we have like minus one minute or so. Um, really? Um, Sorry. Okay, I just have a few... Have a few, few I, would, I would listen to you for hours, but I also have to go to teach, uh, which I, I can delay a bit, but not a lot. Yeah. Okay, so just one minute, it's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so as I said, the, the um, one problem of this, um, one difficulty of this carabial degeneration is that um, even in elliptic curve case, so we have a I n degeneration for all n. So if you take a best change, then then the take a minimal resolution of the appeared uh, AD singularity, a, a type singularity, then this D, the index, uh, get multiplied. So, and uh, to um, at least remove the ambiguity with respect to the base change. So I propose this notion of galaxy. Uh, this is not a 
not discussing cosmology, but uh, mathematics. So, so we can instead take a projective limit of this. Then uh, here's some uh, observation. So if you take a, if for this IMD, the, just a, a singular variety does not map to um, the dual intersection complex, so essential skeleton. But if you take a projective limit, then it has a continuous map to essential skeleton. And uh, this has a really uh, intricate, um, beautiful structure. If you rescale the I mean, micro part, then you have uh, infinitely many uh, two pointed P1 or C star. Um, but it, so these are parameterized by rational point of the essential skeleton. And, uh, but we also have an irrational part. But anyway, the totality looks like S1, although the micro part itself has a very independent, rich structure. So that's uh, why I named it as a galaxy. If you have a galaxy like this is Andromeda, if it, the totality looks like this, <coughs> as a, um, then if you rescale up, if you scale the micro part, we still have a planetary system like the solar system. So which itself is like huge and rich structure we, we live around here. So it looks too similar to me. So that, uh, yeah, originally had a different name, but I changed recently. Anyway, so this is a theorem, I said. And uh, so finally, this is the last slide. So um, another paper discussed the uh, non-compact version of Caleb. Um, Kepler stability and uh, in K0 case. So in uh, for open carabial, sometimes we have a complete rich flat Kepler metric. Sometimes it is un unknown. So I, I, I introduced some open Kepler stability notions and uh, checked uh, many examples much to this uh, notion. Okay. Uh, I especially wonder what's uh, for the uh, bias, what was that, asymptotic log fun or something. Okay, so I finished the talk here. Thank you for listening. Uh, keep safety during this uh, difficult time. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, okay, maybe I feel bad not having questions. Maybe we can have like one question or two questions. You can unmute oh, yourself. Sorry, I think I did something. Yeah, but no, there are, there's no one who wants to ask something. I have short question, but uh, very like, philosophical oh, okay. a bit. So, uh, Yuji, do you think that uh, thinking about uh, model of say K3 or Calabiao, you can say something about uh, model of FANAS or okay, stability of FANAS? If you consider those which are inside. So for example, in mirror symmetry, Mirror symmetry for fun is basically, uh, in some sense, influenced by mirror symmetry for uh, Calabiao inside, yeah, inside of them. I, I'll add to Vanya's question, if I may. If you take moduli of log fanons, yeah, with some beta angles, so you allow the coefficients to go towards zero, one minus uh -huh. beta, beta uh -huh. zero. Uh -huh. You go towards log, log Calabiao, which in a way is what you are dealing with. I know it's for pairs, but I, I'm pretty sure it's not much different. So, uh, yeah, so that's one talk to you about the other one. Um, sorry, what, what's the question? <laughs> so, uh, can we apply basically, uh, can we study, uh, say something about funnels by analyzing moduli of uh, Calabi-Yaus? Because a lot of funnels comes with Calabi-Yau uh, as an anti-canonical divisor. Ah, I see, I see. Ah, ha, ha. I see. Yeah, so this open K polystability. Sorry, I should share again. Um, where is that? It's disappeared, sorry, somehow. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the talk, I, I 
um, briefly mentioned this open K per stability, right? So, um, so that that's one one thing I concerned in this uh, open K per stability. So if you, if you have a funnel uh, with a anti canonical divisor, so my concern is that uh, if you remove this K three anti canonical uh, divisor. Then uh, I wonder if uh, complement has a um, each flat K metric, K Einstein, which is still complete. And this could be the limit of um, uh, conical K Einstein. That's probably you are thinking in the work of uh, Yaniel. Mm -hmm. right? But uh, I think it's depend. So uh, I wanted to see um, the kind of criterion. I think it depends. So the condition, so there should be some hidden condition that uh, as I was uh, discussing with Son and uh, Hayo and uh, other people. So, well, you had this conjecture, right? Uh, so uh, with Yanil, this uh, volume zero should be equivalent to the existence of small angle Kerenstein. But it was not. It was not true, right? I th I think this somehow related. Mm -hmm. Am I answering the question? I'm yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. But my my question was basically more explicit. So, for example, if you take some family of Fano three folds, uh, say V twenty two degree twenty two, and if you want to study stability of them, can you somehow? use uh, moduli of k3 inside of them to do the something like this maybe something uh, like k stability of fun itself yeah yeah but uh, maybe 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 there are no relations yeah maybe yeah well indeed this k open k for stability is partially implied by uh, existence of funnel i mean the existence of uh i mean the k stability of fun itself but mm -hmm. Maybe that's the other way. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, thank so you. I think we need to bring this to a close. Uh, maybe... maybe too much slide. Was that? It's too much slide, I guess. No, 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 no. Like uh, I okay. had to teach at 11 and it's 11 10. So <laughs> I have it. Okay. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You but, heard. Uh, I think this is quite dense. So we should have more talks about this maybe like a lecture series or something uh i was thinking about this as i was watching it maybe i, I oops i'll let you know okay i'm lecturing here yeah <laughs> no no i mean like uh, when the pandemic is over yeah maybe you can yeah, come yeah. to the uk and, and yeah, give like a, a few things yeah. on this okay all right thank you very yeah, much Vanya you, cannot you. travel right yeah yeah Vanya is um is grounded for the longest he's been in his life yeah, yeah. okay so thank you thank you very much yeah, uh, thank you. recording yeah, please.